So a lot of people ask me about sidechain compression, and I'm going to show you guys a couple tricks that I think are overlooked. This is something that I have rarely used in the past, and I think this would be helpful in terms of sidechain. So check it out. I'm going to open up Ableton. I'm going to start by loading up a loop. Let's go with Drums at Knock Volume 8. Let's get this one. We're going to just start making a beat with this real quick. Quick loop. A snare from Drums and Knock Volume 8. I like that. First snare in the kit. And let's get a hi-hat loop. Let's try this one. Okay, cool. We made that beat in how long? <laughs> one minute? Okay. This is about side chain compression, and this is overlooked. So I'm going to just get a regular compressor. You guys know how to side chain. Basically, what you do is when you're using compressor, you click this little arrow, click side chain. Usually you want to side chain to the kick. So I'm going to select our kick, and I put it on this view so you can see what's happening. This is the one by default. It'll look like this by default. You also have this. This is the one I choose to use. I'm going to do a real extreme setting just so you guys can really hear what's going on. For anyone new in here who doesn't know what sidechain is, what this is doing is it's taking the kick and it's ducking out the melody every time the kick hits. So that's basically how you sidechain. Obviously that doesn't sound good. Typically you'd want to adjust the threshold ratio attack and release and we're hitting it by, you know, like 65 decibels. So as you turn it down, it's ducking out less and less. If we were to tighten up the release, the melody would come back quicker. As you turn up the release, the melody comes back slower. Okay, so that's for the beginners. Something that I've seen people do and I've done from time to time is instead of having a track where you're just side chaining to the kick, what people do sometimes is create an audio track and they might want to just side chain, for example, like four on the floor kind of thing. They might do something like this, right? And they might mute that track and then select the muted track as the side chain. So if you look... That's what some people might do if they want that four on the floor technique. Of course, you can use a plugin like Kickstart by Nicky Romero that does it or LFO tool, but this is another way to do it with stock plugins in Ableton. Now, the thing is sometimes a kick drum, like in this case, is too fat and you want a more tight side chain effect. What some people might do is use a rim shot or like a very short click, some kind of short sound that accomplishes a tighter sound. Now, this is a cheat code that I don't think enough people use. There's this section here in sidechain called EQ. So it's on right now, and there's a high pass filter on it. One thing that you can do, you can turn up the frequency with a high pass filter on, so you're only getting some of those top of the kick. You're not getting that round bottom of the kick. You're getting the more transient sound of it. So, Right now, we're hearing the muted kick. As you turn this up, see you're only getting a little bit of that transient of the kick. So that's very different from that. So let's try messing with this and side chaining the melody with just the transient of the kick. And I'm gonna keep the other drums muted. What I did was I clicked the headphone icon. That's allowing us to just preview what the kick is sounding like cutting through. So check it out. So let's go extreme with it. Now let's start doing the high pass.
Do you see how it's getting more subtle and more clean sounding? Because our kick has a lot of bass, it's fat, it's wide. Once you start doing a high pass, it's just giving us just a little bit of the kick and not all that bass response stuff. So we're able to shape our sound going into the side chain on the way in. So without the side chain, it doesn't duck at all with it. With the high pass set to 2.3 kilohertz, and you can preview it. So that's how you do it. I think that's an underestimated technique. I notice a lot of people will use like a rim shot or some other type of sound in order to get that effect, but you really don't have to. You can shape the sound right from the EQ section on the Ableton stock compressor. How many of you guys know about that? How many of you guys use that? I think that's just a real handy technique.